My name is Rebecca Fitzhugh, and in this video, I will show you how to protect and restore OneDrive files and folders using Rubrik Polaris. Time is precious when it comes to recovering data, so we know that you want an easy-to-use data management solution that can handle all of your use cases, including Microsoft 365 protection. Companies often need to archive deactivated users' OneDrive files for longer periods of time due to a number of reasons, such as legal hold. Rupert provides cradle-to-grave lifecycle management and automates that long-term retention. Another common use case is operational recovery for OneDrive files and folders in the event of things like accidental deletion, which is what I'm going to demonstrate for you today. So to begin, we will first take a look at SLA domains and how they can be applied to your Microsoft 365 subscription, as well as on the individual OneDrives. Then I will show you a number of different ways that you can recover your files and your folders using Rubrik Polaris. So let's begin by taking a look at my OneDrive account. We can see that I have a number of folders containing important files, such as my favorite GIFs. But today I'm searching for a file called Bumper and I can't seem to find it, even though I recall using it just the other day. So I must have accidentally deleted it. Luckily, my OneDrive is protected by Rubrik. So let's navigate over to the Rubrik UI in order to see how we protect and restore our OneDrive files and folders. By default, when I log into Rubrik Polaris, I'm brought to the dashboard page, which shows me a global overview of things like system events and compliance for all of my different workloads and data being protected by Rubrik. Specifically though, we are looking for our SLA domains and we have a number of SLA domains already created. So let's dig into the policy that's protecting my OneDrive account. So we can see that this policy is actually protecting more than just my OneDrive. We see that it's protecting a number of different data types. Within our protection policy, we can specify things like our snapshot frequency and our retention. And this determines our SLA's recovery time objective, as well as our recovery point objective, or our RTO and RPO. And because an SLA domain is a declarative policy, once I apply it to a data type, then all of the lifecycle orchestration is scheduled and automatically managed to meet my desired outcomes. I can assign this policy as broadly or as granularly as required by my use case, from the subscription all the way down to the individual OneDrive. So by selecting inventory, I can view all of my different data sources, such as Microsoft 365. So notice that I have the ability to assign the SLA domain on the subscription level. So this will allow me to effectively create a catch-all SLA domain and apply it at the highest level to ensure that all accounts have a minimal level of protection. You can always override at the individual account level in the event that there's some sort of exception needed for a particular user or group. So let's look at more granular application. So by default, it shows me Mailbox, but I can quickly toggle over to OneDrive, and I can see that a handful of folks have had their OneDrive protected by an SLA domain. But let's select my colleague Chris and Yap, and then select Manage Protection. This will allow me to go ahead and quickly select an SLA, review all of the settings affiliated with it, and assign to ensure that those user accounts and their OneDrives begin to be protected. Now, note that you can use the same SLA domain or a different SLA domain for email versus OneDrive. And this can be handy if you have different retention mandates for different types of data. So underneath the toggle for data source, notice that you can additionally filter by SLA domain and by object status. So active, of course, means that this is an active OneDrive account. And a protected OneDrive may become a relic object if the user is deactivated. The existing snapshots will continue to be managed, archived, and eventually expired by rubric, unless you choose for the system to do otherwise. Now we realize you might have hundreds or thousands of users, so you can easily come up to the top right hand corner and type in the person's name to get quick results. 
So we'll go ahead and search, find my account, and select it. Now on the user overview, I can view the status pane, which shows the SLA assignment and whether this has been assigned directly on the OneDrive itself or say at a higher subscription level. I can also see how much of my storage is being used. And if I need to, again, I can toggle from OneDrive back to Mailbox. The snapshots pane gives me a calendar view of all my various recovery points. Above that, I can see a summary of my protection status with the total number of recovery points, as well as the oldest and the newest listed. If I know the name of the file I need to recover, I can go ahead and search across all snapshots for that file for recovery. So simply go ahead and type in the name in the search bar. It will return that information and I can go ahead and click that file to initiate the recovery dialog. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that for right now. Now, if I'm not sure the name of the file or if I want to recover from a specific point in time, I can go ahead and navigate in the calendar view and select a particular date. Now, notice that the timestamps here are exactly 12 hours apart. And this aligns very well to the frequency configuration in the SLA domain. Now I can select recovery options to again bring up that same recovery dialog, but this time I have the ability to browse the different files and folders. So if I want to, I could go ahead and select to restore my entire OneDrive, or I can choose to go ahead and select and browse through. So notice in the root, I see the file bumper that I've been looking for. So I can go ahead and select that along with any other files that need to be restored and then press next. You have the option to restore to the original user or to a different user. Restoring to a different user is most commonly used when recovering files or folders from a user that's no longer with the company. Now notice up here, that our dialog box also tells us exactly what the recovery folder will be called. So you don't have to hunt and peck for it in your OneDrive. And then simply go ahead and click restore. We see confirmation of that task. And if we go over to our events dialog, we should be able to see that that task is running. So if we select it, we can view additional details and we can see that it were completed very quickly. So we see that it only took about 12 seconds. So let's go to my OneDrive and verify the recovery. So if I go back to my files, I might need to do a quick refresh. And I can now see that recovery folder available. So if I select that, I can see my bumper file. I can even click on it and view that it is available. And if I want to, I can go ahead, drag, drop it, or right click and move that file back to my desired location. And then if I no longer need that recovery folder anymore, I can go ahead and simply just delete it. So now I can see my bumper file is back in place, which will allow me to finish editing this video. So to summarize, this video demonstrated how simple declarative policies can be used to protect and manage your OneDrive files and folders. Next, you saw how quickly you can search or browse to restore data in the event of accidental deletion. Thanks for watching. For additional information, please visit rubric.com.